Hey guys, and welcome back to Fenrir, and we are joined with the one and only Eileen the Mastiff, biggest dog breed in the world. So when I click bait and say that this is training the biggest puppy in the world, might be clickbait, but it's absolutely what we're doing. We're doing heel work with Eileen today. We've done a couple of videos on kind of Eileen's heel work updates and the principles of how we're getting there. And Eileen's a really interesting case because most people have difficulties with getting their dogs to come back in because they want to pull off. Whereas when Eileen's been on a lead, it's been kind of getting her to keep up has been the big issue. So we've done been following my own perfect puppy course, practicing what I preach, setting her up to get her to understand what the H-E-E-L command means. I'm not saying it out loud because she's on a break right now. So I'm happier with her just kind of being out in the front. And I'm going to show you what it means when we start to move off and crack on with heel walking and what amazing progress she's making. So I think we'll start going and I'll talk you through as it goes. So we'll do the Eileen heel. And let's go good girl come on so you're going to see that she's so low energy everything super relaxed with eileen but the principles and the foundations are exactly the same i've taught her what it means to be in this position and that being in this position is a good thing eileen good girl yes and I've also taught her how to communicate through the tool of a lead. So if I ever need to apply any pressure with the lead, she understands what that pressure and what that communication means, whether that's bringing her back in from the front a little bit, or which is more likely the case with Eileen, is getting her to keep up. So I'm gonna do one of my 180 turns. Eileen, let's go. So she knows to try and keep up again. She's so almost Eeyore, oh, okay, I'm coming, that getting her to kind of keep up is the thing. So we could force this a little bit more but eileen's kind of her own thing she's the most chill laid back relaxed low energy dog i've ever met and i still want to make these walks a positive experience and i don't want to just be dragging her around for walks i wanted to enjoy it so we're trying to really come on oh yes oh good girl oh yes and in her own time she catches up and she gets there and when eventually she makes it into this position that i want her to be come on you can do it you can do it yes oh good girl then she gets a treat sometimes she gets a treat sometimes it's vocal inflection but all i'm doing is looking for her just to pay attention come on let's go oh okay yes and you'll see she is probably the most fun dog i've ever had to work with because it's just the polar opposite she's just so chill she's so relaxed with life but she is going to be english mastiffs are the heaviest dog breeds in the world and if i don't get this part of the heel work right at an early age when she does get a bit older and will want to go out and burn off some of that energy more just because they are lower energy dogs doesn't mean they don't need to be walked she will be an absolute nightmare so getting these early foundation stages in at this age is absolutely critical and really important for her and for her future success so today we're just out and about we're layering up the distractions we're in real world scenarios kind of where we walk every single day and we're going to start to now bring in other dogs and get her to go past dogs whilst maintaining in this nice loose lead good girl engaged way so yes maybe she's not a labrador doing a beautiful auto sit and laser focused on my eye content but she really does want to make a good effort and she tries in her own way in her own pace and in her own time which i absolutely love she's amazing so we're making incredible progress and we'll kind of uh, show you how we do that with layering up the distractions oh good girl so as you can see we're definitely always working on this beautiful good manners yes good that's superb always looking for that eye contact and eileen's our personal family dog she's going to be coming out with us especially when lockdowns ease we're going to be going to coffee shops and pub gardens and just pottering around the local villages and towns and i wanted to be able to come with us and when we stopped i wanted to be able to go into this lovely sit and stay with delightful manners and just be an awesome dog that's all i need from her to walk nicely to sit quietly with good manners and come back to me when i ask if she does those things then eileen is absolutely my perfect canine companion now it's all well and good being able to do it inside and we've mastered that and then be able to do it in the garden and we've mastered that and now we're coming out or over on the estate that we live nearby so there's new scents new sights new smells new sounds new people new dogs and we're starting to build up the distraction level so what i want from eileen in this situation is you can see that joe with with his uh, labradors back there riley's now six months old and she's starting to become one of our role model dogs usually i would have my labrador sully doing this role 
but Riley's doing so well with her training that we're starting to bring her on and be used in our more formal training sessions, not only with our own dogs, but with our clients. So what we're going to do is we're going to start doing that drill again. And I'm just going to be looking to get Eileen to pay attention to me, especially when we're going past something that's high distraction. So you're going to see me now start walking. So again, this is nice because she started to lose focus, which is OK, but it's not perfect. And I want her to remain focused on me. So Eileen. So I give her the opportunity. Where am I? Yes. Now she's chose to ignore me. So I'm going to put a little bit of lead pressure on, which brings her back in. Yes, good girl. Waiting for the eye contact. Yes, good. Thank you. Bringing that engagement. Always look up to me for guidance and direction, no matter what's happening. So again, this is another lovely opportunity. This is beautiful because we have got some people that are about to walk past as well, but we're going to keep rolling and keep practicing this drill. So, so Eileen, let's go. And we're now starting the process of going past dogs. So again, you can see Eileen is never in a rush for anything. Yes, good girl. Little bit of lead pressure comes on. Just a reminder, stay with me. Let's go, come on. Yes, good girl, that's better. Good. Let's go, we're gonna come back again. And we're just gonna keep drilling this. And this will be lovely, because we're also gonna be able to move past people that she's not met before. So again, we're going here, high distraction environment. I'm in control, remaining good, assertive body language and posture. Yes, good. And if you remain with what I'm asking, then good things happen. If you pull away, then the lead pressure goes on and we just communicate that effectively through the lead. Morning guys, how are you, you all right? Good. Yes, good. So this is a wonderful real life, why it's happening in a situation. She was curious about it, I'm okay with that. But she's displaying the good manners that we're looking for. What I really like here is a nice just bit of eye contact. So again, this is gonna, Eileen, she's chose to ignore. Yes, good. Beautiful, good girl. So at no point am I overly asking for anything there. You'll notice I didn't utilize any commands. All I want in this situation is for you to engage with me and pay attention to me because I'm in control of this situation. It might seem trivial that she's just trying to sniff a stick, but you need to think big picture. The micro picture here is that she's distracted by a stick and she wants to pull it towards her. I need to say, no, I need you to pay attention to me because the macro picture of that is we're in a town centre and she sees a child or another dog or a cyclist or a car and a bus. I don't care what that is, you still need to look to me. I don't want you to pull towards those things because that is the basis for reactive behaviour that can eventually turn into aggressive behaviour, which means she'll be a nightmare. And I always find if you fight those little battles with leaves, twigs, sticks, small things, you avoid the big battles. And again, you're building this foundation of no matter what's happening, I want this. Yes, good. Again, she knows where the treats are. She's clever. Yes, good. But looking for that eye contact and that everything good comes through here. Engage with me here. And this is nothing more than continuing the communication from me through down to Eileen. So that's beautiful. So again, I'm gonna actually use the bit of obedience here. So Eileen heel, good. Let's go. You can do it, yes. Good. And this time, we're going to do the same thing going past Riley. So again, Eileen's displaying lovely behaviour. She's a little bit out, so I'm going to give a little bit of lead pressure just to bring her back in. Yes, good. Come on. Yes, good girl. Oh, good girl, thank you. Oh, good girl, thank you. She always has to take a second. She loses her treats. She drops them all the time. Come on. You can do it. Yes. Heel. Yes. Good. Heel. Good. And we're going to drill that again and build that up. So again, now this time we're going to go right past Joe and Riley. I want to do a really close sweep, make it very difficult. Obviously, Riley's still only just six months, so it's an excellent learning opportunity for her because she's been asked to be put in a nice sit and stay. And it doesn't matter what's going on. We need you to engage with us as your calm, consistent leaders. And that was wonderful. That was superb. Yes. Give her a second to eat a treat. Because again, Eileen always needs... <laughs> if Riley can do something in two seconds, she needs 15 or 20 seconds to do it. Don't you, baby? But that's okay because you are awesome. You're perfect. So again, let's go. Heel. Yes. Good. Good girl. I need you to engage with me. Yes, good. 
So again, just communicating through the lead, guys. Let's go. Beautiful. Again, we're going to go a nice close sweep. So we might do a stop here. Yes. Good. And this is what I want. I want you engaged with me at all times. We will let you two play, but you can play when we tell you that we can, you can play. And we're out. We're going to give them some time to romp and run. But right here, right now, that isn't the time. And this is lovely. Yes. So again, good manners, sit, wait, look up for me for guidance and direction. No matter whether you've got another puppy right in front of you. Yes. Waiting for the eye contact. Yes. And you're going to get paid for displaying that lovely manners. And this is wonderful. This is the foundation. So again, it doesn't matter whether it's a leaf that's distracting you, whether it's your best mate that all you want to do right now is run and play or in the future, another dog, a bus, a cyclist, the highest distraction possible. It does not matter. All I want from you is to be calm, quiet, displaying good manners. Yes. Giving me that eye contact, looking up to me for guidance and direction and everything's going to be OK. And what a beautiful example of two young puppies, six months and four months, being able to be calm, relaxed, displaying perfect manners. To have 100% success all the time is not fair on your dogs, but you need to put them in situations that is out of their comfort zone for them to be able to grow and for them to be able to evolve. And that's what we talk about, the baby steps. Now, would Eileen be able to do this? I always use the example of in Times Square. No, she's not ready for that. In six months, she will be. So this is a good example. There's a lorry off in the distance, and that's what's peaking both of their interests. Yes! But straight away, we're getting the eye contact come straight back to us. I don't know if you could hear that, but it's just gone right by that road there. So that's where we're at with the heel work with Eileen. As I always say, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and it takes reps, but we're working on this every single day. She's going on the school run multiple times a day. We're slowly leveling up the distractions every day and you'll check back in in a few months and we'll be in a busy town. And then a few months after that, and we'll be in a busy city. And I'll have a dog like this, biggest dog in the world, that will be attracting attention from everywhere, sitting quietly, displaying good manners, always looking up to me for guidance and direction because she knows that when she does, good things happen. She knows if she gets distracted and tries to make her own decision, I just quickly, but fairly, and you've seen it happen a few times in this session, I very quickly just come in and be like, nope, back here. Bring it back here, and then the praise comes back in. And that's all it is, guys. That's the essence of balance training, and it's the essence of being a high-level canine leader. So we're going to carry on working these two wonders. And you've been a good girl, Riley. Well, you becoming a good role model dog. Yes, you are. You're a good girl. And so are you. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bit of a different one today. Subscribe if you're new, because we'll see you on the next episode.